And hello and welcome to Golden Bear Insider, episode three. Glad you found our November edition of the show. And I'm Dan Flanagan, joined by Tom Rebelke here from Buffalo Wild Wings, just a few blocks away from the Concordia campus in St. Paul. And Tom, time is always going by quickly. We're almost wow. done with the fall sports season here. We got two football games left, a couple of volleyball. Soccer just finished up already. But yeah, it's going by quickly. And we're getting ready to talk about basketball quite a bit over the next few months. So we're going to be doing that later in the show with both the women's and men's teams. We're going to get into football, cross country as well, talk football. But we're going to start out with soccer. Soccer fresh off a trip to the conference tournament, first trip since 2009. And we're joined by head coach Steve Bellis, uh, sophomore defender Kelly Heightens as well. And uh, both of you, thank you very much for joining us here today. And uh, making it into that conference tournament, as I said, first time in a few years. Uh, just if you can, you were able to secure it on that last day of the regular season and kind of what was that like to to solidify that spot know you could continue your season? Oh, it's tremendous. Great for the program. Very exciting for the, uh, obviously for our senior group who had never done it before, but really good for the uh, incoming freshmen to kind of get a feel for what it's like. And, and now we've got a good foundation moving forward for, for future years, hoping that we can, uh, we'll make that conference um, tournament every year. So no, it was terrific. It was really good. You got the program moving forward in a nice way right now, and, and I know you had a big part of that as well, being a uh, you know, uh, big part of the program this year. You had a lot of fun. I did have a lot of fun. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, and then uh, and then I think you ended up with uh, with five team, five members in the all conference team. Yeah, it just came out today that uh, you know five of our players made all conference, which is uh, unheard of in, in my time at least, and. Uh, all five deservedly, all five seniors, so it's a um, really good recognition for those guys, and uh, yeah, it's tremendous, really definitely good for the program. Well deserved. Yeah. All the seniors deserve it, yeah. definitely. Awesome. You had a few losses early on in the year in the non-conference, had that kind of exciting game against the Turbo, that last non-conference game that you won in, in overtime. Did you feel like that was a turning point, or was there any time in the year that sort of stood out when you really kind of got things going, played very well in the second half of the year? Um, I don't know if the turbo was the turning point, to be honest, because we then went on to Crookston and got beat at Crookston, which still still stings a little bit, to be honest. Um, I'm trying to park that somewhere in the history, but that's, that's been difficult. But um, I think the uh, I think the win at Bemidji was a turning point. You know, we'd had a we'd had a rough day the day before at Crookston. We went to Bemidji and absolutely played them off the park and uh, deserved the win. We won one nothing, but it could have been three or four. Or so. It seemed um, like you were peaking at the right time. It looked like you seemed like you were just getting things going, and, and it, I thought you had a great. It was fun. It was fun to watch the last few weeks. Yeah, we. I mean, we got to a point in the season where we were dealing with injuries. We got some kids back playing. We'd figured out our best eleven, um, and, and games were going our way, and uh, we were taking the chances that we were getting in the game. So yeah, no, we had, we had a great run. I mean, yeah. it's. Uh, yeah, I thought but, but the Bemidji was, the, was certainly for me. Yeah. Anybody on our day, and, uh, and that's kind of how it went from there on. How did you approach that game yesterday, the Minnesota State game, going down there? You knew it was going to be a tough matchup. They're very good, but what was kind of what were you kind of talking about as you as you went into that one? Yeah, I'm still trying to park that one as well, Dan. Um, we we knew we knew that they're a good team. Um, we had a game plan. Um, the game plan was going okay and then we started to make some individual errors and, and with individual errors the game plan goes out the window unfortunately so um, you know we'd figured out their best player we doubled up on their best player we'd limited their chances and they scored from from basically our mistakes you know if you look at all the goals we kind of gifted them for there was a couple of refereeing decisions that didn't go our way as well but um, I mean give credit where it's due Mankato are a very very good team extremely athletic and um, and they'll go a long way in the uh, NCAA tournament. And Emma, Emma Gardner, a goal for the goalkeeper, coming off a huge win, or excuse me, a huge game, the, week, the, the game before. How many saves? 21. Unbelievable. Yeah, huh? no, and, and Gartner's done well for us for four years. This isn't, uh, wasn't a surprise. Sure. Great kid, uh, unbelievable attitude, and um, just unfortunate that yesterday didn't go her way, but for the most part, she's, she's been a fantastic uh, goalkeeper for us for the last four years. Kelly, we mentioned the seniors. You had a couple in the defensive group that were uh, really a big part of that. What have you kind of learned from watching them this year that you can take going forward? I have learned so much. Um, Taryn McMillan and Rachel Gratz, their shoes are going to be nearly impossible to fill, that's for sure. Um, you can learn from them on and off the field. They're both tremendous athletes, great students, great people. And I just think anything they did, you can learn from their mistakes, you can learn from what they did well, and just take from it, move forward. And 
work towards a new goal next year, which is hopefully to win our first game in playoffs. That's so. Right. That's right. And uh, Steve, what are kind of some of your thoughts on the seniors? You could tell, you know, in that game against Winona, how hard they were playing, how much it meant to them to to overcome that and get into the conference tournament. Yeah, no, it's been a good group. It was my first recruiting class at Concordia. Um, all got good character. They're all different. All different kids. All got different. Um, different abilities on and off the field, but um, no, it's a tremendous group. I mean, we're going to miss them tremendously. Um, both on and off the field, they, they've kind of led the program in the right direction. So, yeah, I don't want to single any one of them out. Yeah. They, they've all they've all put their stamp on the program in one way or the other, whether they played or, or didn't play. You know, if you think about Sam Marthala, who unfortunately tore ACL three times and hasn't, hasn't really kicked a ball for us in four years, but her impact on the program has been tremendous as our our student worker, but our, our just the, the, the team ethic that she has and, and so on and so forth. So, no, it's, um, it's sad that they're leaving, but um, I think they've definitely made an impact on the program and uh, will be sending us in the right direction. It's an exciting time for them going from being a student athlete now to an alum and being back for the alumni game in, yeah. you know, early in the, yeah, the, in, in the, the fall next year. And the <laughs> chat on the bus last night was already about this will be the best alumni team that we've ever had. <laughs> We're going to give it to you, Steve. There's going to be... Uh, it's going to be a victory for the alumni, and I'm like, ah, whatever. So no, it's it's good that they they're already thinking that way, you know. So yeah, it's terrific. It's well, good stuff. It's good. It's good, uh, it's good locker room talk for you. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, for next year. Yeah, absolutely. That's cool. And uh, yeah, Kelly, for you, I'm sure you have a lot of time, obviously, to think about it. But it, as we talked about getting into this conference tournament, now gives everybody that's coming back a nice goal to kind of work on in the off season and and go uh, use going forward for next year. Yeah, absolutely. I think we really raised the bar this year as a program, and I mean, we're looking to just go one game further next year, if not two, and if not all the way to the championship. So, I mean, I really think that we improved this year a lot, and we're ready to move forward from it. All right, well, congratulations to both of you. Thanks for joining us today, and uh, Steve, throughout the fall as well, and uh, we've enjoyed talking to you. Thanks, Thank you Steph. Very much. Yeah. Steve Bellis and Kelly Heitens here on Golden Bear Insider. Dan Flanagan, Tom Rebelke with you here uh, from Buffalo Wild Wings in St. Paul as we're going to shift gears now and kind of do a preview. We just did a recap, now a preview for men's basketball and the men's basketball team. They're actually at the Gangelhoff Center tonight for an exhibition game against the University of St. Thomas. Begin the uh, season for good next weekend. A couple home games in the non-conference schedule, but Tom, it's going to be pretty fun to have basketball going on again at the Gangelhoff. Yeah, I'm excited. You know, uh, <clears throat> it's, it's been, it's, you know, basketball is it's everybody's sport. Everybody loves basketball. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that went, that's, that's what everybody does all winter long. They're in, they're in the Gangelhoff Center, and I'm looking forward this year to we have a number of uh, key seniors on both the men and women's side, and, and I'm really looking forward to, to uh, watching some of these people play. It should be a lot of fun. We're going to get into basketball now as we're joined by head coach Joey James, senior Cole Olstad, and uh, thank you very much for joining us here today. Appreciate you having us. And uh, so we, as I mentioned, you have the exhibition game uh, coming up tonight, and uh, I've been practicing here for a few weeks, getting the team together. I guess for both of you, what have been some of your early takeaways here from these couple weeks of practice, what you've seen out there? Well, I think our guys have done a good job um, as far as our new guys buying into what we're trying to do. Uh, but I think the big thing for us right now moving forward is understanding how to play hard every single possession. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, yeah. <laughs> And uh, Cole, uh, you, you saw the team reach some new heights last year uh, with, with the record that you had. How much did that kind of motivate you to help everybody take it to the next step now this year? Oh, for sure. We want to get right back to where we left off last year, um, make it to that tournament, start in the conference. We got a tough conference ahead of us. We'll have a good test tonight, see what we can do, and then we start rolling again next week in uh, Central Missouri. That'll be fun. Yeah, well, yeah. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, there'll be some good competition there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah. What, uh, what kind of things were you working on in the, in the offseason to try to improve your game? Uh, just better dribbler, better shooter, um, bigger, faster, stronger. Just try to increase my overall game. I know kind of been reading up about the team a little bit, going with some smaller lineups. You might you do a little bit of that kind of stretch four role, some of those type of things. How does that change the responsibilities, if at all, at times you've been more of a perimeter player? Yeah, it definitely changes a little bit of what I'm doing off the ball, uh, screening more, looking to take it inside more. Uh, definitely be more of like a team player type deal. And uh, coach, for you, you mentioned all the newcomers coming in. Uh, have you been pretty happy with the way they've kind of blended in with everybody that's coming back? Yeah, I have. You know, the one that, uh, that stands out the most to us right now 
um, is our transfer, Diallo Powell. I, I think he has an opportunity to make an impact for our program immediately this year. Um, and then our freshmen are still trying to they're still trying to get acclimated to just the speed and the physicality uh, of the game right now. But uh, but I do like our freshmen. They're working hard. They're trying to figure some things out. Uh, they just need a little bit more discipline, uh, both offensively and defensively, just with our execution and things like that. But but I, it's a good group. Uh, I think you'll see another kid tonight, uh, and, and Brennan Matthews, who, who really competes and plays hard. A kid out of Egan, a local kid. Uh, that we think has a bright future, uh, along with OC. OC's a very athletic kid. He just got to figure some things out. You know, he's got to be a little bit more intelligent, uh, IQ wise. Um, and then we have Stephen Kratt, a uh, big kid out of Iowa that, uh, that that's very smart. Got to get more athletic. Got to get quicker. Got to get faster. You know, things like that. But but I love his his skill level. Um, and then of course Brandon uh, McRory out of uh, Illinois is, is going to be another uh, solid player for us uh, this season. Uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, with the, with the uh, exhibition game, how much of that is about trying out some different things lineup-wise and seeing what it looks like out in an actual game setting? Yeah, I mean, we're, uh, you know, we, we've, unfortunately, we've encountered some injuries. Uh, we got some guys out for uh, a period of time. Uh, so we're, we are definitely going to go small ball this year uh, until we can get those guys back. And, and um, But we're, we're going to mix some things around tonight and just, you know, we're going to try to play everybody. Uh, we obviously are coming in here. We want to compete to win the game, uh, but it is an exhibition. And at the end of the day, it's, it's a learning experience for us. So it prepares us for next weekend. You know, you, you were talking a little bit ago about the, the young players. Obviously, it's a big adjustment for them going from high school ball to college ball. But what about someone like Diallo, somebody like a transfer who's coming in from a, um, a maybe a D2 program or, or a different program, whether, whether junior college level or how much of a transition is that? How much is that change for them? Well, I think from a physicality standpoint, Diallo's fine. From an athletic standpoint, he's completely fine. He, he's, uh, he's older, he's more mature. I think that helps him out in, in terms of just the adjustment. The only thing is just buying into everything we're trying to teach him. It's a brand new system, so it's almost like a freshman coming in trying to learn the system. But he's, uh, he, he's, he's ahead of his years uh, most days. But he could be one of those kids for us defensively. He could be big time good if, if, he, uh, if he continues to buy into what we're trying to to sell him so well, as a senior you know everybody's going to be kind of learning things the newcomers how often do you try to jump in if you see something in practice and and uh give some of that leadership i try to be as much vocal as i can be um these guys do a good job of getting after us when they see some things we need to work on but sometimes it's better to come from a player so i try to do as much as i can with still being a positive teammate looking forward to your final year huh oh i'm excited so i came back yeah yeah good for you and uh, non-conference schedule, you mentioned you're going down to Missouri. You have a couple home games as well. You play Bemidji State in a non-conference game. How did you kind of go about picking those opponents to get you ready for the conference season? Well, obviously, we got an extremely tough league, and uh, it's, it's going to continue to be one uh, of the best leagues in the country. When, when you're looking at uh, top 25, we open up next week against each Central, who's 25th in the country. Uh, they got a big-time point guard back that's uh, let them in scoring a year ago. Um, you look at Central Missouri, and they won the Division II national title a couple years ago, and they brought in five new transfers. So they're going to be very, very good. And, and so what we wanted to do is work on an in-region crossover challenge that will, will challenge our kids uh, and to help us prepare for the, uh, the, the tough NSIC conference. Um, on top of that, I wanted to add another Division II game, and what a better one than one of our own opponents that we go against uh, only once a year. And it's, it's no different than playing Bemidji if they were in the South. And uh, I think that's what we were looking at trying to do uh, is to try to get more in-region games to help us out, you know, when it comes February, March, and the committee's got to sit there and make a decision. Because last year I felt with our 19 wins, we were just a game short of, you know, getting an at-large bid. And, and the team that did had 20 wins. And so we thought if we can have one more, if not two, use that cutoff as about 20 wins uh, for, for that committee. And that's why I wanted more games uh, and tougher games also for our guys. All right. Well, uh, we'll look forward to talking to you over the next couple months. And uh, Joey and Cole, thank you very much for joining us here today. Appreciate you having us. Thank you. Joey James and Cole Olstad here on Golden Bear Insider. Again, the men's basketball team at the exhibition tonight at the Gangloff Center, University of St. Thomas. A nice, uh, fun in-city rivalry. So definitely, if you have the opportunity, check that out tonight.
full schedule is available on the website, cugoldenbears.com. So we're going to have plenty more coming up here on the show. We're going to get into cross country next, but first we take a quick break. Back in just a minute, you are watching Golden Bear Insider, a stream-powered production. It was January 14th, 2011, playoff time, when mere mortals fall, but the great ones create their own destiny, like Barry Patterson and his against all odds hail Barry. He launched it past the front line, cleared the secondary, and threaded the needle to victory. Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings, Spear, Sports. O'Garris is a proud sponsor of Concordia Golden Bear Athletics. O'Garris, come on in. And hey, welcome back to Buffalo Wild Wings here in St. Paul. Glad you could join us, Golden Bear Insider. We do this every month, be posted uh, the first week of every month. So we're glad you joined us here for episode three of the show. We're kind of in that transition time between fall and winter sports. Already heard from soccer and men's basketball. So we're going to talk cross country now, cross country team coming off the conference meet a couple of weeks ago, getting ready for regions coming up this weekend and joined by head coach Jonathan Breitbarth. And thank you very much for uh, joining us here today. Thanks for having me. And as I mentioned, team coming off of conference and we had talked about on the last show that it was going to be at that same course where you run the GREX, so something you were very familiar with, the uh, team having the opportunity to host conference this year. Overall, how'd you feel the runners uh, did in that conference event? Overall, we really, uh competed well. I wish we had stayed together in groups a little more. Um, that had been a strength of ours throughout the season is running together in, in groups of two or three. We got spread out a little bit and that will happen at a championship race once in a while. Um, but it's a, it was a learning experience uh, for, for the team as a whole. Um, we've got uh, really one senior on the ladies side, only two seniors on the guys side. So um, it, they, they competed well, but I think that they would have done even better if they had been able to stick together just a little longer together in, in their packs, in their groups. Overall, did you see some pretty good improvement from the runners in the times that they posted in the GREAC? We always take a look at that, and uh, we did see some, especially on the men's side. Our women ran fairly well at the GREAC. Our, our guys did not have a good GREAC race, but they, you know, they were taking off anywhere from two to four minute improvement over a it was over a 28-day span that we saw on, the, on that men's side, and they ran a lot better. Um, one of the things that helped was we went out on Wednesday um, to the course. One of the advantages of hosting the conference championships, we went out on Wednesday and, and did a workout, kind of a race simulation out on the, work, on the, on the course, and that really helped them from a, a mental preparation standpoint to know exactly where they were at on the course and, and for the men especially, it, it helped them tremendously to see big improvements uh, at the conference championships. How important is the course? I mean, uh, it, it, you know, hills and flatlands and whatever. I mean, is, 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 that, is that, I mean, it's got to be important, but does that affect as much as people you might think? Well, just like any external factor, it impacts you as much as you make it impact you. Um, if you're, if it's something that's in your head and you're thinking about it, it's going to impact you more than if, if you're one that recognizes as an external factor, prepares yeah. as best you can for that external factor, and then just lets it be an external factor and, and focus on on your racing. And I think that was part of that, you know, that Wednesday workout was yeah. part of that was recognizing it as simply an external factor that you don't have any control over um, and, and attacking it. And One of the things we talk to athletes about, especially if it's a course where we run twice in a season, the hill isn't getting any taller in those 28 days. The, 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 the turn is not getting any tighter. The, it's it's going to be the exact same course. The only thing that can change is you and your your ability and and. But and is the but is the is the Bolstead course is that considered a, a tough course? 
middle of the road course? It is middle of the road to tougher course. Um, and I actually saw at the D1, you know, the GRIAC is a, is a big meet in yeah. Division One, Division Two, Di Division Three. A number of the top individuals in the D1 race at the GRIAC, actually, a lot of them have been hurt since then. So it is a, it is a, a harder course. It's not exactly. extreme, but it's a, it's a harder course. And if you're not prepared for it, it can take something out of you. Okay, so the, the fact that they were hurt now it had nothing to do with, with, with Bolstad, nothing to do with the course. Well, well it, it, it kind of depends on, as, as a coach, you also have to think, the Bolstad course is such that you have to recognize it as you come off of it and do workouts. If you're going to race on Saturday at the Bolstad, you got to give a couple days to let your body adapt to what, what sure. it's gone through. Sure. So. In the uh, four conference as well, you host an event like that. It's about more than just the race. I know you're trying to put on a good environment for the fans. You did some community outreach as well. How did things go from that perspective? You know, um, it's the third time in nine years that we've hosted, and each year it continues to get better and better. Um, the the coaches are, were so appreciative of, of all that, that took place. It was the first time that a community engagement uh, event took place with the Northern Sun at the cross country championships. They've Which done it for basketball. Yep. You had a huge yep. Yep. Side, yep. And we've already had our post conference uh, uh, NSIC call, and they've already said next year this is something. It went well. We're going to continue it again next year. So Sioux, That's good. Sioux Falls hosts it next year, and and now a tradition that we we help start is going to is going to continue. So we're we're excited about that. And, Great. And then I mentioned you have uh, regions coming up on Saturday. Just quickly, if you can tell us a little bit about what's what's going on there, what you're kind of looking to get out of that race. Uh, it's a it's a fun race for the guys because all years they've been running 8K or five miles. Um, now they're going to jump up to a 10K, um, which is 6.2 miles, and and we're really excited about uh, about where the guys are at. They're feeling quite confident on the ladies' side. It'll be another 6K, but it's going to be. Um, we're going to see the, the fastest times of the year, I think, out of our ladies they're, with where they're at, at in terms of their conditioning, their, their, their confidence level, and it's just a good course to get out and, and run, run well. It'll, we've had a great fall. Um, I think the next couple days here in the Twin Cities, it's start, going to start to get a little cool, but Joplin will remain uh, uh, in the 50s, and it'll be good racing weather, and we're excited. And, and um, yeah, it's... it's uh, we did well. We ran there three years ago, so a couple of the athletes ran there as freshmen, and they're they're really excited to see what they can do and how much they've improved over this four Good years. So. Well, JB, we've enjoyed talking to you over the last few months. Thanks for your time here today. Thank you for having me, guys. Jonathan Breitbarth here on Golden Bear Insider as the cross country team getting ready for regions coming up at Missouri Southern on Saturday. So we're going to. Talk about football now as the football team wrapping up the home schedule this coming Saturday, taking on Southwest Minnesota State at noon. They'll uh, wrap up the season the following weekend against Augustana. So get into that here as uh, they get ready for a couple more home games. And uh, Tom, what is kind of the plan for the game on, on uh, Saturday? It's going to be going on there at Seafoam Stadium. Yeah, it's a senior day. Uh, we're going to be honoring our seniors. Uh, you know, and, and right now we're at a point now where we need to, well, we, we have a chance to, to upset some people here. We got a chance to end some seasons, some, a chance to just to throw a monkey wrench in the, some, some, some team's plans. And, I, and that's all I'm hoping we do. I'm hoping we go out and just play hard and, and, uh, and just see what happens here. Let's see what happens. And we are joined now uh, here on Golden Bear Insider from Buffalo Wild Wings by head coach Ryan Williams, also uh, sophomore nose guard Chaz Roberts. So we thank uh, both of you for joining us here today. Thanks for having us. And uh, coach, we heard Tom just talk a little bit about kind of that spoiler role, and uh, you know, it, over the past few weeks, it certainly hasn't gone the way you drew, drew things up. Have had some adversity to overcome. Uh, has that been kind of the message to the team here now for what you want to get out of these last couple games? Honestly, the message all along has been about moving forward and continuing to put our best foot forward to do positive things. I mean, we've had some tough weeks, uh, we've had some embarrassing losses, but we've also had some losses that have gotten away from us with. Honestly, you know, a handful of plays, five to ten plays that changed the outcome of a game like crazy. And, and people outside of not watching the film and seeing the ins and outs where you really lose control of a football game wouldn't know it except for maybe us or somebody that really has a keen eye for the game. And, 
Uh, the whole message has been about moving forward, and we're excited about this week. There's some very good possibilities and, and exciting things that we got on the table for this week, and that's that's where our focus is. Yeah, you can't you can't look at who you're playing now. It's just a matter. Of, they're all good. Everybody's oh, good. Right. Everybody's that, good. This conference is is it's ridiculous how good this conference is in every sport, not just in football. So you really can't look at who you're playing. You just got to go out and do what you can do. And, this, and just like you said, play a little spoiler rule. Let's do a squat and slap someone in the face and, and win a game. And, uh, and, right. and, and you know, like we talked about this week on Tuesday and Sunday, is, is we just want to go out and win a football game. Yeah. And you know, people what people lose sight of when they look at your record and they see that you're one and whatever, and is the fact that we do still prepare Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday with every goal and aspiration to go win the football game and we put things good on the table offensively and defensively and our kids work hard in practice. We took a different approach this week just to try to spur some more energy and it has and it's an uncharacteristic thing. We've been helmets all week because we've been so uncharacteristically beat up. I mean we have people have no idea how many guys that we've had out of the starting lineup then practice on Thursday and are still making errors on Saturday. So I just finally said listen I'd rather have people get reps Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and it's uncharacteristic. There's not a lot of teams, even that are undefeated, that just go in helmets every day. And we're going to cut it loose and crank it up on Saturday and let these guys run around and, and cause some havoc. Yeah, exactly. Play for the seniors. Right? Big day for the seniors. Yeah, it's huge. How, and we, tell them, how many, how many seniors are we going to be honoring here on Saturday? We have 16 kids. Yep. Uh, one of the juniors that came in this class is going to graduate uh, with his class he, just because of his debts piling up and different things, and he wants to get on with his, get on with his life in the work world. But we have 16 seniors. Um, shoot, we have three of those seniors that aren't playing, haven't played all year because of season career-ending injuries. Uh, but there's 16 guys that have poured their heart and soul into football, let alone at Concordia St. Paul. We have kids that are a one-and-done senior, like Charles Arnold, who transferred here to try to play one year. And then we've had guys like Jordan Halverson and Jimmy Moreri who have been here six years, and, and a lot of things in between. I mean, everybody knows the story of Hank Goff, um, but there's a lot of other really unique stories and, and good kids that have grown up and become men in this football program and in this university. And uh, we just want to go out and play hard for them. And our track record's been pretty good on senior day. We talked about that on Tuesday. And we just kind of go lay it on the line for each other and, and go win a football game and upset Southwest State and ruin their mineral water bowl plans or whatever plans they got. It doesn't matter. It's, it's about winning a football game. And we can come away on Saturday with a winner. You forget about all those other losses for a couple days and, and get ready to play another one. So that, that's what it's all about. There's only 11 games in a football season. And we talk about it all the time. It's about the next week you're playing. So. As you've had a big year this year and uh, some games we've been able to get a real good pass rush going. What, what have you kind of learned about playing that uh, nose guard position over the course of the season? Uh, really just demanding the double team, uh, really just taking the blocks, kind of going 100 miles an hour uh, every play and just keep it relentless. So that's really something well, that I focus on. How about working with Hank Goff every day? Oh, he makes me better every day. It's just something that drives us to yeah. be the best D-line in the conference. And yeah. hopefully, you know, every day we strive to do that. Yeah, I gotta believe it helps. I gotta mm -hmm. believe it's just fun to yeah. you know, saddle up next to him there and go and get after it a little bit, you know. Coming from Southern California, what kind of drew you to being a part of this Concordia program? Sorry. Coming from uh, Southern California, what kind of drew you to being a part of this Concordia program? Uh, pretty much, uh, just the uh, just the culture of kind of Concordia, small school, you know, uh, hands-on work, stuff like that. Um, and then really just being a part of you know the guys because I, I believe this is one of the programs that I've been the closest to uh, as far as just camaraderie and then just being a part of you know something special and hopefully uh, this next game we can put a stamp on you know what we're gonna do in the future and you know hopefully we'll we'll you know stop the bleeding. So. Thank you. And uh, coach, we talked about you know you certainly want to honor the seniors today. You're trying to get those wins, as we said. How much can you learn too now about looking at some different position battles and with some of the players you have coming back? Uh, learn to take some things going forward for next year. Kind of who can win some of those uh, jobs. You're right. There's a lot of guys that are playing uh, too early. You know, I, I, I say more than half of our games this year, we've had four redshirt freshman offensive linemen playing, along with Cole Parker, who's the only senior that we had here a couple months ago. We didn't anticipate it to be that way. Uh, we lost Matt Bjork again to a back injury. We lost Josh Coyne to a concussion where he can't play football anymore. Uh, we've had some other injuries like that of taking guys out for three, four weeks at a time. And it's about evaluating those young offensive linemen. The experiences they're getting now at points aren't helping us win. But in the future, whether they're a starter next year or a backup in a crucial situation, it's going to help us. And there's, there's positions like that all over the football field that we're going to hopefully reap dividends in, in the future. And there's other position battles that you know, you're seeing two young guys compete and see who can play better 
uh, against really good football teams and make a decision whether you need to recruit that position a little heavier than another. And honestly, finding guys, I brought Chaz today because he's one of those guys. He plays with effort. Whether we're winning 49 to nothing or we're losing 49 to nothing, Chaz is demanding double teams and breaking double teams and playing with a heart and effort that is what you want in a football program to win. And there's a lot of guys like him on this football team, and we got to find more of them and get those guys to rise to the top so we can continue to uh, overcome some things and, and win a game. All right, well, Ryan and Chaz, thank you very much for joining us here today. Good luck uh, in these next two games. Thank you very well, much. Thank you. Good luck this weekend. Right. Head coach Ryan Williams, Chaz Roberts here on Golden Bear Insider. We're coming from Buffalo Wild Wings here, just a few blocks from the Concordia campus in St. Paul. Again, you can come out and see the football team honor those seniors on Saturday at 12 o'clock start against Southwest Minnesota State. So a big group, and they've meant a lot to uh, this university, this uh, program, so definitely come out and uh, support them on Saturday. We're gonna close out the show talking women's basketball and volleyball on the other side of this break. You are watching Golden Bear Insider. It is a stream powered production. It was January 14th, 2011, playoff time, when mere mortals fall, but the great ones create their own destiny. Like Barry Patterson and his against all odds, hail Barry. He launched it past the front line, cleared the secondary, and threaded the needle to victory. Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings, Spear, Sports. Practicing the fundamentals. That's the key to success. At Northwestern Mutual, we focus on proven principles, facing challenges together to help reach your financial goals. Welcome back to Golden Bear Insider. We're here at Buffalo Wild Wings in St. Paul, our third edition of the show. And talked about men's basketball earlier. We're going to preview women's basketball now as we're joined by head coach Paul Fessler and also uh, Kara Friedenberg. And thank you very much for joining us here today. Thank you. And uh, as we talked about with the men's team, you've had practice going on for a couple weeks here. You've brought in a lot of new, uh, new players, pretty big freshman class. And how has that maybe kind of changed the approach in practice as you've had a lot of players that you're kind of getting acclimated to the program? Well, I mean, half the team is new, so 14 on the roster, seven of them are freshmen, so it, it's taken a while to gel together, but uh, I, I think the work ethic, the, the chemistry and everything is, is moving in the right direction. We're all very excited about it. I mean, Kira, Kira knows how difficult it is coming in as a freshman when there was only two last year. Now there's seven. They kind of outnumber everybody, so uh, I think it's probably easier for them to to get involved and be more active and commit because they got more numbers. I was talking to Coach James during his time here um, about the freshman side. Big difference between playing high school ball and college ball, huh? Yeah, there's a much bigger difference between that, just the competition level, the work you have to put into it. How about the speed of the game? Is that, is that there a big difference there as well? Yeah, especially well, with having a shot clock. You have oh, to yeah. get up, you got to get going. You can't just stand around and do whatever you want. It's a lot faster pace. How are you adapting to that? How are you adjusting to that? Um, I think I adjust it really well. I yeah. like getting up and down and getting moving, getting going. Good. And I, you certainly don't expect everybody to pick everything up in a couple of weeks of practice, but as you get into the first couple of games, what's sort of the biggest thing you want to enforce in them to have them ready to play at this level? Well. Let's go back. Number one, I do expect well, them to pick yeah. up everything in the first couple weeks. So, but uh, no, we, you know we've got some high-level scrimmages and exhibition games that we want to we want to challenge ourselves from a competitive standpoint for 40 minutes. Can we compete for 40 minutes? Can we stay? Can we fight through the difficult times during 40 minutes and, and find our weaknesses because they'll be exploited in those games and what we need to work on. And everybody's done a really good job in our first two scrimmages of competing and battling and, and I, I think that's been the most impressive part right now getting on, getting going the one thing is trying to pick up everybody's tendencies that's that's what takes a while who's going to be where for their shots where they like the pass you know how how do they communicate from a, 
on a weak side defensive setup, you know, can you hear their voice? You know, that's, that's the thing. Right now, we kind of joke, we hear seven returners. We can't get the freshmen to get their voices loud enough yet. And, and those are things that will come, and, th and that's what we need them to pick up on. How do you kind of see your role on the team evolving this year? You did get a decent amount of playing time on a pretty experienced team last year. Um, well, with us being so young, I mean, I do have a year of experience, and so I am looking to, um, to be a leader and help out our incoming freshmen in any way that they need um, help at all, and just to be a part of a team, make sure that we have success, never give up on anything, just try to be a role player and get everybody going. She's, she's being modest. She's, she's loud, she's vocal, she sets an example of how hard everybody should be working. Um, you know, she's recognized as one of the hardest workers, if not the hardest worker on the team. She leads us in rebounding in our first scrimmage that she played in, 16 minutes, 11 rebounds. So she's going to be, she has high expectations. She's not a role player. She's not, she's going to lead by example and, and set a pace for all the young players to try to, t try to reach. And uh, one rule change the fans will notice right away, the switching to the four-quarter format this year. Does that really affect anything that you guys are doing in, in terms of how you strategize? Not in, not in preparation or strategy. I mean, I think it's – I don't have an opinion either way. I think it's fun. It's just a different change, something different to look at. But I don't see anything different. Have you noticed anything from the first scrimmage? Um, not other than I need to quit fouling. But yeah, that's the, it. Foul, you know, the fouls are different because you start over at zero every quarter. Once you get to five team top fouls, there's the double bonus. You know, there's no more one and one. You know, the one and one is gone, which we're okay with unless you get to five team fouls real fast, and then you got to watch everybody shoot free throws for the rest of the quarter. So it, it it'll be interesting, but I, I don't see anything drastic from the style of plays. You're going to be going down to Puerto Rico for some of the first uh, regular season games after an exhibition game against Iowa State. What are you hoping to get out of that trip? Puerto Rico? Yeah. Um, suntan. Suntan? <laughs> not me. Maybe a round of golf? No. We got, we got two teams down there. We're playing uh, NCAA Division II teams from Puerto Rico. They have three or four Division II schools down there. One is really talented. They get all the talent. Um, the national coach for the national team coaches at this university so they're very loaded very talented the rest of them are are just kind of getting what they can get um, what we know down there is we want to go get two wins we know that there's not a lot of size um, it's kind of funny you know you have uh, volleyball is following us as I see them over there all their size plays volleyball in Puerto Rico none, none of their size plays basketball which is good so we'll get a lot of fast quick guards but we should we should be good in the post play down there and see how that plays out. But yeah, we're going down there, you know, get this young team together. You know, we try to travel every other year. Um, and this was a year to travel. We count them as actual games, but it allows us to play two bonus games. So uh, I don't know, are you guys looking forward to it at all? Yes, very much so. <laughs> Can't wait to get there. But before you go there, you got a, you got a couple of exhibitions coming up. We have one. We, I mean, we've always uh, already had two close scrimmages, one with uh, University of Minnesota and one with University of Northern Iowa. That, that went really well. I mean, we found some things we need to work on and improve on, but I thought we did well with the goals we established for those. And this Sunday we go to Iowa State, which is loaded. Um, we're, we'll watch them tonight in their first exhibition game. And we'll, again, in those games, our goals are all right, show that you can compete for 40 minutes with your chin up, shoulders high, back, ready to go. Don't worry about how it's going. Can you still can compete and be mentally tough in it? And then try to run what we're running. Don't get out of system because you're in a panic mode. Stay with what we're trying to run and try and execute it. And we did a really good job with that in the first two. And Iowa State will, will pose a more difficult challenge than the other ones. So I'm looking forward to it. I think the, I think the players enjoy it. Yes, yeah, I mean, it's not easy, it's physical, it's demanding, but, you know, we're hoping when, yeah, it's the, we like the challenge, we're hoping when we get back to Division Two, the game slows down for us because we've been playing at such a high pace early on, that's the goal. Looks good on paper, right? Sounds good. Home opener? Home opener, we'll play uh, top 10 Michigan Tech, and then we'll play NAIA Jamestown um, the second weekend, what is that, around the 20th? We look forward to that. 
Um, that, that should be, again, we, we build our schedule with great opponents, so we got top 10 Michigan Tech coming in, and we'll be ready for them. And Jamestown will be top 10 NAI, so we don't take a night off. Get ready for that conference season. So uh, we'll be talking to you over the next couple months. And thank you, uh, Coach Fessler, Kira, for joining us here today. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, as Coach Fessler said, we're going to have volleyball to close out the show coming up in just a minute here. But uh, as we continue on with Golden Bear Insider, we're at Buffalo Wild Wings here in St. Paul. Again, we're going to do this show every month, first Thursday of every month. And uh, I guess you know how to find it if you're watching it right now. But uh, we'll have those available for you every single month. Be back in December and uh, have a lot more basketball to discuss in those future months, but uh, exciting years for the basketball team last year and expect there to be a lot of excitement. Uh, always fun with those weekend all Always headers. fun. Always fun. We get good crowds there at the Gang Love Center for all of our home games and uh, it's always a lot of fun there. Yeah. And, you know, uh, I want to I bring up, uh, you know, uh, Zach Schuster, the fellow who produces this, you know, this whole deal for everything for Concordia with St Stream Power Productions. And, uh, I was forwarded an email that was sent out and it was uh, talking about how, how, how nice of a job not only the production people do on, out of our, of our webcast, but with you as well. And I just want to make sure, I want to just recognize the fact that, you know, uh, I'm proud of, uh, of of our productions of all of our home games, all of our home contests, and, and of course this, this this show as well. And you guys, uh, you're the ones that make this all work. And so you guys deserve the, the, the kudos on that. So we have fun doing it. They oh, do yeah. a lot more than yeah. I do. So uh, yeah, we enjoy it. But. Uh, Yep, we'll uh, continue on with one more segment here. You got golf have... coming up here now, right? Oh, no, 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 it's volleyball. <laughs> Sorry. I, I didn't bring any golf questions, so I hope not. <laughs> uh, we've got volleyball here with uh, both seniors, Emily McDonough and uh, Heather Schiller. Actually, Emily McDonough, junior, Heather Schiller, a senior. But uh, volleyball team getting down toward the end of the regular season. And um, it's rolling off now, I believe it's six wins in a row after a uh, loss on the road against Northern State. What's kind of been the response for the team coming off of that Northern match? Um, we definitely had a lot of things to work on coming off that match. It was a good eye-opener for us, kind of in the middle of the season, to see what we need to work on, um, kind of changes that we're going to need to make before the end of the season if we really want to compete with the big teams such as Northern. How do you feel uh, the offense has improved? I know that's something in talking to Brady early on in the year he wanted to see grow a little bit. Yeah, we have a really strong offensive team, but we're just, we don't really put it to use. Um, as much as we could, so we've really been focusing on that. We have some big front row players, um, so we've just been working on doing smarter shots, playing smarter, um, getting up and taking big swings when we can. So does Brady remind you of those things during the games and during weeks of practice? Does he remind you of the stuff what you just mentioned? about? Definitely during practice. Does he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He has every his way day, of telling yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, every day. <laughs> He's not here, so we can say anything yeah. we want about him. You know. you know, nobody can see it. He'll definitely watch. <laughs> Um, is there any, you know, you had uh, the loss in the first weekend of the conference season, then that one Northern match. I remember there was kind of the weekend where you had, I believe it was three uh, nationally ranked teams in about six days, won all those matches. Is that maybe a point when things kind of gelled for everybody out on the floor or any particular time that stands out? Um, I think our Duluth match was where it stood out the most, where we just kind of all were playing on and it was just really fun to play. and. Our coaches didn't have to get up and talk to us, and that's kind of our goal as players, is just to be able to just play and not have them say anything. And I think that was the turning point for us, where we kind of realized that we're starting to peak again, and um, which is a good, really good for us, especially in postseason. And Emily, if you can just talk a little bit about your road back. You've been uh, having more of an offensive role over the past few, a few weekends or so, and uh, working hard to come back from a major injury. And I know that's probably only half the battle, just getting back on the floor. I'm um, definitely only half the battle. It's been a little bit tougher than I thought it was going to be, but um, ultimately I'm super happy to be back. And um, even though I'm not performing as well as I have in the past, it's still really fun and um, definitely working as hard as I can to get back to where I was. And Heather, always uh, when you get to this time of the year, a lot of uh, intensity, these matches getting more important as you get down toward the end of the season. What is it? maybe been different for you this year as a senior now knowing it's kind of your, your last go around with this? Yeah, it's, it actually gets a little emotional when I think about it that way, so I'm trying not to think about it so much like that, but um, just coming into this season, I just wanted to leave it all out there my last season, so that's just the way that I've been playing, going into every practice and game. Two big weekends left in the regular season. Yes. Going away this weekend to uh, Augie and Wayne. 
and then you come home the following weekend, finish up with Southwest, right? Yeah. So you got you got a you got a tough tough schedule left for you here. Yeah, and we're actually really lucky to have such a tough schedule going into yeah. postseason. Yeah, you bet. Rather than just cruising through it, yeah. get to play some tough competition. Yeah. So. Gonna get you ready for that postseason. Yeah. Yeah. And if you look at it, you're in that tie for first place in the conference, uh, number one in the latest re in the first regional polls that came out. And I know you try not to focus too much on those things, but an opportunity where you could host the conference tournament, you could potentially host regions. Teams gone out on the road for those the last couple of years. How much would it mean to you to get to play those at the Ganglehoff if it could work out? It's a huge advantage for us. <laughs> it's amazing having um, our fans there, our parents all can be there. We get to sleep in our own beds. Um, it's just kind of routine then, and it's really huge advantage for us yeah. and, and I'm sure you're not the only ones that are thinking about that the yeah. fans and your parents <laughs> and everybody else including yeah. me I, I, we, we would love to host it, either and both of those you know yeah. and, and so I mean yeah, I'm sure you guys are thinking about it a little bit but yeah. I think yeah. the fans and, uh, and, and the people are sitting up there in the stands I think a little bit more about it yeah, yeah. you bet well, I uh, appreciate you joining us here and uh, you have those two weekends coming up to close out the regular season good luck in both of those that is Emily McDonough and Heather Schiller and uh, wrapping up Golden Bear Insider here now from Buffalo Wild Wings and uh, Tom, as we kind of go through November, we have some of those big fall matches we talked about, we get basketball started, anything else that uh, kind of jumps out to this you? Is, this is, you know, November is a really, really busy time in collegiate athletics between, you know, and, and finishing up with like we had JB with cross country and, 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 uh, and, and of course uh, you know, golf finished up a little bit earlier uh, this past month. Uh, but now you got volleyball and football and you know basketball, basketball, both basketball starting up. But, you know, it's 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 just an exciting, fun time, busy time, but it's fun. It's just exciting. Right now. So uh, again, we will be back in December, first Thursday of December, for our next edition of the show. Want to thank you for watching. Definitely want to thank Buffalo Wild Wings once again for hosting us every month. Encourage you to. Come on out here. I think you can probably see in the background, they've got all kinds of screens. It's that time of year where there's a big sporting event on every night. So definitely come on out here, check it out. And also take advantage of the Concordia Home Team Advantage program. If you mention uh, Concordia Athletics here at this uh, Buffalo Wild Wings on Snelling, it's easy to find right by the Concordia campus. 10% uh, of your bill will go to support Concordia Athletics. So uh, definitely a great program there and uh, help support Concordia Athletics and Buffalo Wild Wings as well. We thank them for supporting us. So again, we will be back next month. Want to thank all of our uh, guests uh, from this edition of the show, Heather Schiller and Emily McDonough. Also, of course, Paul Fessler, Kira Friedenberg, uh, Joey James and Cole Olstad, Ryan Williams, Chaz Roberts, Jonathan Breitbart, Steve Bellis and Kelly Heightens as well. Until next time, also, as Tom mentioned, want to thank Zach Schuster, the Concordia students running the uh, cameras and the TriCaster and all that. And uh, until next month, Thank you so much for joining us. You have been watching Golden Bear Insider. It is a stream-powered production.